All right. All right. So just to recap, uh, what happened here was Shaw was working on the SK time model um, and ran into this issue where, let me bring up that, that gist there. So, uh, so yeah, I just took your, your code from Pastebin and I put it in a gist so you could see the diff here. Um, so we've got, um, we've got this model, um, yeah. and exponential smoothing. Oh, that's funny. I was just looking at exponential smoothing for something, uh, yesterday and I didn't put two and two together that I had actually looked at your model also for exponential smoothing that morning. That's hilarious. Um, okay. Um, okay. So essentially what happened here was you have this code and you have, this is, this is the code to run it, right? Um, okay. So, we got to so you loaded, you know, you loaded the sample data set from, uh, yeah from SK time, um, you did the test train split and you have these data, you know, pandas data frames. Uh, so that is something that, that has come up before, um, but we don't have, you know, we don't have support for taking pandas data frames right now. Um, and and so what, you tried to pass a pandas data frame, um, right? So why train is a data frame. You pass that to the, to the train and, and actually functions and, and DFML has no idea what to do with it. Um, so basically that's, that's the point of this issue is, is we need to figure out, okay, how do we, how do we make it so that you can use a data frame. Well, the answer is, of course, like we're, we're going to make a data source, right? And the data source will max, wrap the data frame. Um, and then there's a little bit of, of glue code here within the high level. Um, so within the high level file, um, so the high level functions train test or train t train accuracy predict. Um, uh, so let me just open this guy. Uh -oh. Can you, you guys can see my screen, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, so, it's visible. So within within the high level functions, right, the train and 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 actually and predict, uh, they call this records to sources method. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, you'll so you see if you go in here to accuracy, you see the first thing it does, or here's predict. I scrolled too far, but basically, um, you know, we take. The model, we take, you know, some variable length arguments and then some keyword arguments. And our variable length arguments are, um, okay. So the variable length arguments is like when we're passing just these dictionaries of data, that's, you know, what that star args is. Um, so, we, you know, here we're passing dictionaries. We can also pass like file names and stuff, right? Um, uh, where is it? You know, file names or sources themselves. And so all these, you know, these three functions, basically they have that same functionality with the way that we pass those, those variable length arguments to them. So the first thing they do is call this records to sources function, which is also in high level. Um, so we go in here and we basically, you know, we try to convert everything. We, we want to turn whatever, whatever was given us to us into this sources object and sources is an array of, of data sources, right? So if we were past a bunch of dictionaries, we're going to put those, uh, we're going to create a memory source, make those dictionaries into records and add them to the memory source. And that's, what's going on here. Um, and uh, so there's a memory source. And so what we need to do in this case is, is we're past. Um, so here, we're, oops, that's the source itself. So here we're past, uh, so train and then Y train. So instead of getting a dictionary, right? Like in, in the quick start example, we're looking at like, you know, uh, dictionaries or a uh, file name or a, a source itself. So now here we're getting a data frame. So we need to, um, to, to complete this issue. What we'll do is we're basically modifying, um, we're going to modify this um, records to sources or yeah, let's records to sources function that gets called from train accuracy and predict to make it say, okay, if you look in this, in this section is work where this is a for loop over the arguments, right? And, and here's where we're checking if it's a dictionary and we make it a record. Well, we add this little block that says if it's a data frame um, and to avoid importing pandas because we're trying to keep this the dffml at the top level free of free of imports um, so we avoid um, we avoid that by basically saying okay check make sure we can essentially 
by doing these hazatters, we're making sure that we're going to bail out of this if, if we run into something that doesn't have a class and a qual name. And then we basically check, okay, is the is the string data frame in the in the class name, right? So you're going to see like pandas dot something dot something dot data frame for the class name of, of, of data frame. Um, and so we basically say, okay, you know, if this object that we're being passed is the data frame, then create the, an instance of data frame source, right? And so that's that's this branch. And if we look in this issue, I, I mentioned that, okay, uh, so we, I got a start on it, right? Enough to sort of unblock, uh, to get to the point where that, that model uh, was accepting the data frame. Um, and so what I did was I implemented the records and record methods. Um, so I created this data frame source, right? Here's that edit here. Um, to instantiate the source if we see a data frame. Um, and then the data frame source that I created so far, so we still need to do, we need to implement test cases for it. Um, and so we are going to require pandas within the requirements uh, hyphen dev file. Um, and I, I believe we also require some other things like the uh, NumPy or Py image or something um, in there. Um, so we're, we're, you'll require pandas in there. Um, and then you need to write some tests for this data frame source to, you know, make sure that we have full, full coverage um, line by line um, in here. Um, so we basically, you know, we need a test for, you create a data frame, uh, you wrap it with the data frame source, you can use the high level save and load functions. To, uh, let's see, we may need to modify those as well. So let's see here. Um, uh, okay, is this load? Okay, this also, save and load looks like they also use record to sources. So you can probably just use the high level save and load functions to write your tests. Um, so basically, you know, you save some records to the data frame, load some records from the data frame. And, and this code here is your intermediary code, which is basically, you know, your, the, the source is exposing the data frame within the DFFML, you know, world, right? So, so within DFFML, we, we interact with sources um, so that, you know, that way, whether we're interacting with a data frame or with a MySQL database, the models see it as the same way, right? Um, so, so we're, we're basically just doing this light wrapper here with the source on top of the data frame. And so I implemented the records and the record method. Um, so you just need to figure out how to implement the update method and then write the tests and then we'll, we'll add this. And then once you've got this, then, um, then, uh, where did your, then this will work here where you're just passing the data frame itself. Now, right. The, there's another way that you can do this, right? So, so I've we've done this before, where we run into this problem where, okay, I've got a data frame. What the hell do I do with it? Um, and the answer is essentially, uh, you can take where is that data frame stuff? Um, I think it was in this code stuff, but no train file data frames. Oh yeah, data frame from records. Oh no, this shows how to create a data frame from. Okay, never mind. Um, uh, there's a way. Okay, well we ha I thought I had a way documented somewhere, but I don't think I do. Um, I thought I had written a little tutorial, but I I wrote this COVID forecasting one, and it's not this. So, um, anyways. You can just tell me. You can just tell me like how you went through with it over the COVID forecasting data set. Uh, what, sorry, say again. Yeah, so you mentioned that you had a way, you haven't created a tutorial, but uh, it would help if you would just show me the code base for that. For what, for this COVID forecasting? No, 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 no. Um, the way you uh, sort of did the data frames, use data frames. Yeah. That is, so that's basically this branch here. So if you look in this issue, um, th this branch that's referenced is source data frame. This is the, co yeah. so basically start from here, right? And this is how I did it is basically I called data frame iter tuples. Um, so we can just trace through it right now and just, just so that it's clear, but essentially let's see. So when we call train, what happens is that we end up in this. The first thing that happens is train calls records to sources with all the arguments that were passed to it, right? And and your argument was why train, right? So why train 
becomes the first element in this tuple that is, is args. So we convert args to a list. We go through the list of args. And so the first one and the only one we're going through in this case is so arg is going to be y train. Um, so arg is this at this time. So arg right here is y train. And then we look and we say, OK, look, let's see if the class um, of, uh, you know, the class of that object. So we've got this object, which is arg, the variable arg right now. And we want to check, OK, is this thing a class? All right, so does it have the class attribute? And does that class attribute have a qual name attribute, which is going to be the name of the class? And if it does, then check it to see if, if you know, the string data frame is in there to see if this is, you know, arg is basically of type uh, data frame. And when we're doing this, data frame. Yeah, yeah, so this is basically a hacky way to do is instance um, without importing pandas <laughs> data frame. Um, and yeah. if it if it is, then we instantiate this data frame source, and we, you know, as the config parameter for the data frame, we we say here's arg. Um, so then we go and implement the data frame source. Um, and let's see. Okay, so this is probably going to need to be changed. So uh, we probably need to um, probably need to um, in, uh, require not have a default. I need to remove the default value of none here. I'm not sure. I can't. I don't know why I added that. Um, <laughs> it doesn't need a default value. There's. It doesn't do anything if there's no data frame. Um, so, so yeah. So you instantiate the data frame, right? Um, you or you pass the data frame here, right? So data frame equals the arg, which is y train. Right. So now what will happen is, you know, as we use the source later, right, the source will um, when we call sources with features that ends up calling uh, the records method of this source. Right. And so then we iterate over, uh, you know, the rows in the data frame and we convert it to a dictionary um, and we, you know, delete the things we don't need. Right. The index becomes the records key and the feature data is, you know, the, the row as a dictionary minus the index. Um, the similar thing happens for, um, uh, for you know, if you're just getting one record by the key. Um, and then, so you're going to need to figure out how to implement the update method, and then you're going to need to write some tests for this. And that's going to enable you to, yeah. to, to, to pass a data frame. And that's going to be really sweet, because I think a lot of people want to do that. Right, right. Uh, so the update method, base, what does the update method do again? The update method will, um, so the update method, let's, let's take a look at the, um, memory source. So DFML source memory. All right. So the update, okay, well, this is not a great example. Um, do we have one that's really a good example? I don't think we do. Does the dir source have? I don't think it does, does it? No, it doesn't. OK. All right. Lame. All right. I don't think we have any good examples of update. So essentially, um, oh, yeah, we do. Um, we can look in the example SQL light source. OK. So in the update method, you're going to look at the features of the record. Um, so this is a convoluted one um, because you know there's a bunch of SQL going on here too. But but the gist of it is that um, you're going to you basically look at the record, the data in the records feature. You want to look at the record and you want to save the updated representation, right? So uh, so for example, with your pandas data frame, you're going to find the correct index and you're going to update the fields within that index, right? You're going to update the column values for that index. So uh, here you're seeing, you know, there's basically an insert or replacement happening where we look at the key and then we basically take all the feature data and we, you know, update the feature data in the SQL database. Um, you know, we update, we take the columns and we update them to be, you know, what what the what the values should be for those columns for that record. Does that make sense? Yeah. So basically, I would fill sort of the features corresponding to the index, right? Yep. 
Yep. And and my guess is there's going to be um, so here's the documentation for the data frame. Um, my guess is you're going to use something kind of like um, where was it? Um, you'll probably use the columns. There's like a there's a way to find the columns. Yeah, so the column labels, um, and then I believe if you use, I said I at, yeah, I at. I think you know you'll probably want to look at the columns of the data frame. You want to find the index of the column that you're updating based on the feature key, right? So if my feature key is B, then I'm going to look at the data frame columns and I'm going to look and say, okay, well where is B? Well, the index of B is one. So if I wanted to update, you know, record. So if I wanted to update record one, uh, feature B, then I'd I'd you know index at uh, well, okay, so if I wanted to rec update record one feature C, then I would index at, you know, I'd use I at one, two equals, you know, the, the, the record data. So record dot feature um, C. So that's, you, you'll, you'll figure it out. Um, but essentially, yeah, so basically, right, this would be updating the C feature for record one here to the value 10. Right. So, and, and what we would do is we'd call record dot feature, um, um, uh, and then pass it, you know, in quotes C, right. And that would get us the value of the, the C feature for that record. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Absolutely. So that's, yeah, that's the plan here. Um, cool. Um, and then, yeah, so C recording. For explanation. Oh no, we lost Sudanchu. Um, okay, so and anything on the SKU time model that you wanted to talk about? Uh, not yet, no. I think I'll tackle the issue first and then uh, we can talk about that. Okay, yeah, that's going to be really good because, uh, you know, that data frame stuff is is ubiquitous. Um, and I, I've been asked that multiple times and I just, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't had uh, you guys, you guys know this about me. And, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes it takes me a long time to get around to something that that would be short to sort of give a give a little example of. I just got uh, there's a lot on my plate. So, anyways, I think you you'll be definitely you'll be able to run with that, you know, and and then we'll have that functionality, which will be really great. So, all right. So, Nitesh, um, let's talk about what we weren't able to run console test. Do you want to share your screen? Yeah, yeah. I'm just sharing my screen. Is it visible now? Yes. Yeah. So that's the H2O model, right? And every test case is working fine. Uh, all nice. these things, but Sweet. only the only the console tests are failing. So let me show the error. What's what was that? I think it would be like Python dash M unit test dash V test dot, you know, the it's, file. It's, it's, it's V, I think. Yeah. yeah. All right, great. Okay, no module name. Okay, so let's take a look at, um, let's take a look at your console test plugin. Or let's take a look at your doc, doc string. It's running. That's the H2O model uh, training. Uh, okay, great, sweet. Yeah, and that are the uh, this is the this simple configuration. Nice. That's true. Right. So and let's. Yeah. Let, okay, so well, I so I saw uh, these thing passed, and only the doc string is failed because. Okay, so uh, let's just run that doc string test. Um, so uh, here, mm -hmm. so when you run the can you, uh, let's see, for some reason I can't see like the very bottom little bit of your screen. Can you do like uh, control C, control L? Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so let's go up 
um, do the up arrow until you get to the discover. Um, let's see. Yeah, okay. So let's change this instead of discover to uh, Python dash M unit test um, dash V and then uh, tests dot test model dot test my SLR doc string. Um, test underscore model dot test my SLR doc string. So the class name. Oops. And it's in the it's in the trace back actually too if you want yeah. Okay. So if you scroll up in the trace back just a little bit, um, this is how I usually do that. So see error test doc string. So I just copy paste that thing that's next to see uh, error all caps like six lines up from the one that's highlighted. Yeah, yeah. I usually just copy paste that and then and then that's done. So yeah, there you go. All right, so now this will run just that test. So let's just see just that test. Okay, so no module named DFMO model my SLR. Okay, so let's take a look at your file structure. So basically, something's complaining that it can't find you know that that path to import. Mm, actually, I think I need to install it. Well, so that's let's oh. let's go let's check this out first. Oh, so. Oops, oops, oops. A uh, silly mistake. Yeah, it's S two O right now because I just ah, changed okay. the entry entry points. Yes, half an half an hour before. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> yep, that's the key. Uh, okay. Yep. So yeah, so basically, make sure the entry points match up here, um, and then make sure that it's installed right, and that you've changed the entry you know the entry points in the setup file right, and then you ran the reinstall, and then it should work. Okay, so entry mm -hmm. point not found. So, um, so yeah, have you? Let's run the re. So let's check out your setup file. I think I need to reinstall it. Uh, let's see. Let's check out your setup py first because I want to make sure the entry points are correct. Okay, yeah. So that looks good, right? That that that's the correct entry point. So yeah. So so how did you run the reinstall? Um, let's let's just see how you ran the reinstall. Because did, did you say you had reinstalled it? Because I think the main thing that I've run into here is um, is that that I am that it doesn't it doesn't pick up those changes to the entry points unless you run if you run with dash dash force dash reinstall. Yeah, so it looks like that's that's probably what happened here. Is we need to do and then do space dash dash force. Uh, yeah. All right. So this command, it just control C out of this though. Because this isn't going to do it. You need to do dash dash force dash reinstall. Because oh. that's basically, it won't pick up the changes to the entry points unless you add this flag. And I argued I argued with them about this. Um, but the, apparently this is the way it is. So, <laughs> um, so I need, I yeah, need, to, so add you need to add force. dash dash force dash reinstall. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think if we let's let me I'll re I'll validate here that we need to let's see. Um, oops. So yeah, go ahead and hit enter on that. It's going to reinstall the whole model, right? Yeah, I don't know. See that I don't understand why it feels the need to reinstall the dependencies, uh, but such is life, I guess. Uh, and what was the entry point name again? S two O Auto ML. Cool. Yeah, this thing. Yeah. It's a good thing you have faster internet, though. At least makes this less painful. Um, the other thing, the other way that, that you can do this that makes it slightly faster. Okay, so there's a trick here, but the problem is this trick won't work in a few months. So I opted to not put it in the docs. Um, so basically, remember we had that giant conversation about eggs versus wheels, um, and so, um, so 
basically there's if you run python setup.py space egg underscore info it will update the entry points now the problem is that command apparently is they move away from eggs and towards wheels will not work very soon um so you can use it for now if you want um i'll paste it in the gitter um but just also know that it's not in the docs because it's apparently destined to fail soon so i didn't want to put it in there to sort of head off uh, having having that problem um uh, let's see so oops Mm, there's an issue regarding the uh, versions of the uh, libraries, right? Uh, okay, yeah. So I think let's just try running it. So Running the test? Yeah, run the part? test. Try running the test. Yes. Cannot import the console. Oh fuck! Okay. Um. Okay. This is the other problem with force reinstall. Is that do? Let's do that. Okay. So oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So the. Mm -hmm. God damn it. Um. Okay. Yeah. The the other problem with force force reinstall is that it reinstalls DFFML. And it reinstalls it from the production version for some reason. Um, mm -hmm. And this is why we had that whole... This is why we have the whole setup with the setup py files that we had, um, where we dynamically check to see if dffml is installed as a development package. Because then, or if it's not, then we don't add it to the list of dependencies. And if it is, then we... Well, we, then yeah, if, if it's installed in development mode, we don't add it to the list of dependencies. So we just need to do a pip uninstall dash y dffml. Um, reinstalling it will not fix the problem um, because what happens is that it's installed in both development mode and in production mode. Um, so you see it's in site packages. That would be like the production version. Um, Python will automatically use the, the, the production version over the development version if there's a development version present, um, which is obviously a point that I take issue with um, because I would argue if you have the development version of something installed, you would want to use the development version, um, but that's the way it is. So you need to do pip uninstall dash y dffml. Um, so. And then only the development version will be installed now. Yep. Pip uninstall. And this thing. Yep. Right? Okay, great. So now if you look at now now if you try to run the command it should run the development version. If you ran uninstall again, it would mm -hmm. um if you yeah, if you ran uninstall again, uh yeah, so you go to CD. Um, no, don't. So don't run it. Don't don't run it again. Sorry, CD back to that that directory that we're in with the model, and and run the tests again. Um, I was just saying, if you were to run uninstall again, then it would uninstall the development version. So you'd see that. Oh. The, yeah, you'd see you'd see exactly sort of the problem um, that it it treats the production version better. Um, Okay. God damn it. Okay. No, it did. It did uninstall it. All right. Okay. Things have changed. All right. Yeah. So you need to go do that dash e one. Uh, you you don't need a cd though. Don't worry about cd. Um, you can just run it. Okay. Mm, where is it? this thing right yeah just to run that yeah yeah this packaging stuff is really annoying to say the least all right so now let's try running the test again we'll see if all those version numbers blow everything up or not um it's installed let's see 
Yeah, it's possible that all the versions of packages will exploit everything. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's mad about the Chardet thing. Ah, uh, okay. I think you need to do DFML service dev install. Um, and then it'll it'll reinstall all the correct versions of all the packages at once. Um, the FFML service dev install. So this will re rerun the install for all the plugins. This? Yeah. And you probably want you probably want uh, dash. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, they. This is this has been happening. Um. Yeah, the problem is that that yeah, the problem is that that to load anything it it explodes. Um. Oh god, this is so annoying. Um. God, I hate this stupid packaging stuff. All right, okay, try just uninstalling AIO HTTP and Chardet and then rerun the the dev install. So pip uninstall dash y chardet uh, space AIO HTTP. Alright, now try doing that PFM all. Um, no, wait, don't do that. Uh, just run the service dev install and pass dash user. There you go. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, I just missed this thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, double, double dash or a single? Yeah, single dash. Okay. Yeah, okay. Air HTTP distribution was not found and is required by the application. All right, so we need to figure out what we need to do here is it's it's loading this stupid. Um, st God, I hate this stupid thing. This thing sucks. Um, Let's install this AIOS. Yeah, go ahead and install okay. it. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, go for it. I, yeah, I have not figured out what the hell is going on here yet. Um, skip. Yeah, Dell for Pi. Okay, now I, we should be in a good, good position here now. There's got to be a way... I mean... Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the solution here right now is, but we really need a way for it to just not install the production version of the package if the development version is installed. Because I think what happens is it goes and yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the hell happens, but something is messed up with the whole packaging thing. Um, and installing to a virtual environment can can help mitigate this because then you can just blow up the virtual environment if something goes wrong. Meanwhile, uh, I just want to know how to uh, write a code for the test cases of this particular source that I'm working on with the HDF5. What's the flow like the, uh, the setup class and then tear down class and then again a setup class? So, how this thing work? yeah, okay. So, this is basically, I mean, so this is leveraging that source test. Um, and the best thing you could do is, is go look in that util testing source. It's basically just, um, I mean, this is sort of, it's trying to, it's, it's trying to give you just sort of a, a bit of an abstraction over, um, you know, needing to write those testing the update method and, and testing the um, records and record method themselves. So, and actually, this is a good one for Shaw to know about the uh, data, the, the data frame source. Um, so uh, let's go into that, the DFFML source code and look at um, 
util testing source source test and and that'll, that'll i mean that's that's sort of your answer here is um that's what's going on all right great so now hey all right okay so it's wait a minute list missing singleton where is this um train okay so something's going on with your config i think let's look at the config for your model this features feature float strip. we're just going to go through all these properties and see if one of these is a list data type um Okay, yeah, list. You have that execute algos. Um, so what is it a list of? Is that like a list of strings? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So then we need to change it to be list stir using the typing model so module. So it's capital list. Um, uh, sorry, uh, so so uh, just the first little letter is capital. Um, and then okay. uh, brackets stir within brackets or uh, sorry brackets not parentheses um the yeah uh, like an array like an array access yeah there you go so this is using that typing module um we we um, we're adding a type hint saying that the, there is a list and it's of, of type string all right so let's see uh, let's see if that does it there oh yeah you got to import from typing import list Right. Hey, look at that. Yep. Finally. Sweet. Nice. Good work. Yep. It's been, I think, two days I'm working on two days. how to solve this problem. I know. Well, the stupid packaging stuff <laughs> is just ridiculous, man. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, it could not be more painful. I mean, like, <laughs> that's like... <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So let's see. New missing requirement uh, QLs. That's sort of like you know some of the some of what. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So you got this something with pickling and unpickling the model. Um, so something something to do with loading and saving the model. Um, line. Um, yeah. Actually, that's that's the other problem that uh, I am not able to load the model. Okay. Uh, after I have saved it uh, as a job lib things. So let's so so that. different 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 objects will or won't support um, you know pickling with job lib or, or pickling or, or other things like that. Um, so uh, some sometimes this stuff works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and pickle has a note in there about you know highest protocol and whatever, and and basically like the different levels of pickle um, pickling. Uh, determine like you know it, it determines like some objects some object like a dictionary easy to pickle right um some things like you know these comp more complex models with different properties may or may not be serializable to disk you know for example if they may be backed by c code or stuff you know it, it can be it can be complicated and, and python may not know how to store them to disk and that's maybe what's happening here so let's take a look at line 198 in your file I'm just saving the model. Hello? Yep. You're saving. OK, sorry. Um, let's see. OK, so job lib load. Okay, so job lib load, what does that function do? Um, uh, I think in that case, I need to find out uh, the another way to save the model if job lib and pickles doesn't support in S2 or so. Right? I mean, Maybe I think, 
Let's see. Yeah, where are you saving the model, I guess? Let's see. Um, so that's loading the model, right? So where are you saving it? At the end of the train function, maybe? Yeah. They're gonna, they will have some kind of way of job lift, yeah. jump, dump. Yeah, they, so, so, yeah, my guess is, is you need to go look at H2O and see what they say about saving and loading the model, right? And actually, you know, well, let's take a look here. So let's take a look at that object that you created, um, that, that scroll up a little bit so that saved so that thing does that have anywhere where it's specifically saving to disk no it doesn't look like it checkpoints to uh, maybe um, because H2O uh, OMOR ML is like a collection of uh, multiple machine learning yeah. algorithms so Maybe because of that, we are not able, not able to save it. I mean, like, uh, they they sh will have some. I mean, they should have some way that they they talk about how do you how do you get this thing back, right? And this may yeah. be a case where you just need to ex. You know, you need to just dump uh, self dot config, right, and load self dot config. Um, this may be you know that may be the case here. You know what I'm saying, right? Because you're instantiating that H2O auto ML instance using all the properties of, of your config, right? Um, and yep. one of those properties in your config is the directory to which you save and load, right? Um, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah, so so you may, you may be able to get, like, if pickling the model is not what they want, you know, if maybe they're using export checkpoint stir and project name to then create a, you know, maybe they're creating a directory within their, you know, using those two attributes and they're saving and loading for you somehow. Um, if that's the case, then, you know, we just want to make sure that we're instantiating that model with the same project name and export checkpoints so that it knows where to save and load from, right? And in that case, you know, we would we would we would pickle our config object, right? And then we'd instantiate, you know, we'd load the the pickled config, and then just instantiate an instance of that H two ML object with the same config, right? If if that thing is handling it underneath, you see what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. Okay. So that that may be the case. It may not, right? You're going to need to do some investigation there um, to see. Uh, okay. and, and definitely look into look into what they recommend, right? Actually, for the Dal for Pi stuff, we'd had, uh, we weren't sure, right? And and we opened an issue with them, and we asked the guys, you know, we, we asked the project team, uh, how do you recommend doing this, right? You know, how do you recommend saving and loading? And they said, you know, after many, many months, they finally replied and said, oh, we have Joblib whatever support. So, and it sounded to me, I haven't used Joblib much, um, but it sounded to me that there's may maybe some methods or something that you can define in your class that allow Joblib to, you know, better serialize and unserialize it. Uh, you know, the class. And, and so the Dalphorpy guys, you know, just as an example, they must have implemented those. These H2O, you know, whoever is maintaining H2O ML, they may not have implemented that. And so Pickle probably is trying to do it the best it can, but it may not do it correctly. Whereas, you know, if you, they had implemented these specific methods, then maybe it would do a better job of, of serializing and unserializing. Um, or maybe they have, you know, some documentation on, hey, we don't support Joblib, you should do it like this. Or if they don't, then you can, you can always just open an issue and ask them. Um, so they're a pretty big community. They might get back to you quickly, or, you know, if you find the answer, um, then there you go. Right. Yes. yes. Cool. So do you feel like you have a path forward here? Yeah. And okay. I think this, uh, actually I have a, uh, another parameter in a config that is show leaderboard after the, uh, training of this model, S2 model, it's, it generates, uh, multiple. Um, different models and then create a leaderboard kind of stuff. Nice. Right? So if user if user wants to show a leaderboard in their console, mm -hmm. so I just made a boolean variable like a yep. uh, user can config on the uh, console that show leaderboard true or false. On that basis, uh, I'm just showing uh, in the logger, right? So I think so you need logger.debug or logger.info or something. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm asking. Uh, oh, what it's is the logger debug or info. 
So we don't have, yeah, so we don't have any sort of standardization around this right now. And we have an issue to say, you know, hey, we need some more structure to the way that we're doing our logging. Um, right now, pretty much everything is just debug. Um, I would argue that if the user is specifically adding this as a config parameter, then it probably should be info. Um, sorry, so I was saying, you know, basically everywhere we're using just debug, but this is a case where since you're asking the user explicitly, then info is probably appropriate. Okay. Right, because the user is asking for this information, right? The user is not asking for debug information. Uh, info is probably the appropriate level here. Yes, perfect. Cool. Okay. Uh, I think everything is working fine for S two O, and for this part, what what file I need to read? Uh, as you said, DFML util or something. Oh yeah, DFML. Yeah, so see, so just that source test that class, which is in coming from DFML slash util slash testing slash source dot py. Um, slash testing slash source dot py. And then the class in there is source test. So yeah, just take a look at that. Um, slash testing slash source dot py. Hey. Source test. Uh, well, I mean, so yeah, if you look, no, it's source dot py, and the class within it is called source test. It's just that import path above where it's saying uh, yeah, source dot py. No, sorry, it's dffml slash util slash testing. Yep slash source dot py okay oops as the class within it that you're looking for is source test okay Perfect. yeah that's that's gonna be what you want there cool yeah and that that'll you know that'll answer your questions as to what is actually being tested here so yeah, actually, I'm just a bit confused. What what was the flow? And the yeah, and and and, and and essentially, what it's doing here is it's basically you know it's creating one instance of the class. You know, when when we you know instantiate this test case, um, and then um, or the you know that when we create the class, and then it's using the same instance of the source. Um, or no, let's see, what is it doing? Oh, setup class. Oh. Oh yeah, that setup source method returns the the source itself. Setup class is used for yeah creating the. I think you have the right format here. I would look at you know there's 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 other examples that you can look at. I would basically be reading the code to you um, if I told you right now because it's been so long. Uh, so you'll 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 find out when you read it. Um, but and then just ask if you have any questions. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, uh, any oh, we have Sutanshu now. Um, any uh, Sutanshu, do, anything else from uh, uh, Natasha or Shah? Do you guys have anything else you want to talk about? No, no, no. Thanks. Okay, great. Yes. Uh, no, just just one final thing. When you say you want me to update it with the uh, master branch, you want me to make sure that my repository is up to date, right? Yeah, That's I want. I, much. I I want. Yeah, you need to. What you need to do is you need to basically you fetch. You know the the or right the upstream. You fetch the upstream, which is slash yeah, until yeah. slash dfml. Yeah, you yeah, you yeah. pull you pull down the, this the changes from the master branch, and you either rebase or merge in the changes, right? Um, yeah, you, absolutely. Yep, and then you push it up. And I think it's probably going to be something with a change log, is my guess. Um, but yeah, it's usually the change log. So, all right, cool. I'll do that. Um, so. All right, Sutanshu, how's it going? Uh, yeah, it's going great. I'm sorry I haven't gotten to the example thing yet. Um, I looked at it, and I realized that this is tricky. Um, it's trickier than I thought it would be to start with um, on, like, how, how do we set this up, mainly because we're now involving JavaScript. Um, and so the questions uh, become a little more... Um, you know, it becomes a little more like, okay, we talked about the web UI last week and stuff, right? So it's uh, now we're getting into the space of, okay, we're going to start testing JavaScript. Um, how do we do that? Um, so there was a couple things that I'd looked into that there was this Playwright um, module from Microsoft, which looks awesome. If you guys ever need to do some browser automation, that thing looks really cool. Um, uh and then there's some other things like like Cypress that look cool too. But 
I'm not I'm not entirely sold on anything yet, um, especially because I'm, I'm not sure how that all interacts with the console since that stuff is the the test the the example stuff just dumps to the console. Um, so I haven't I haven't gotten too deep into that yet. Um, and, and I'm not sure. Does anybody have any anything that they've used for JavaScript testing before that they really love? I have used like Selenium WebDriver. Okay. Yeah, for testing. Yeah, there we go. I think I've heard of Selenium before. This is like this has been around for a while. It's a pretty pretty battle tested one. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, where was the? Uh, let's see what the docs look like. So this look yeah this looks very similar to the um, actually this looks very similar to uh playwright um so uh, the the benefit of playwright is that it has an async interface um so this may this might be a way to go it might um we may it looks almost there let me show you playwright um It may be worth going with the the playwright because of the async 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 interface, but yeah, you see, it looks basically, um, it looks very near near the same thing. Um, so, anyways, we'll we'll I'll probably I'll probably I want to do some more digging um, just because uh, just because uh, I see this <laughs> being something that we use more and more of, and I don't want to don't want to want to make a hasty decision here um so let's see yeah so uh, actually i wanted to talk about uh, uh how are we like going to do the the mctx route and the actx route so, so previously like uh, we had decided to go with the the parameterized decorator uh -huh. so i have actually implemented the parameterized decorator but the, like there are some issues which i'm facing Okay, let's uh, let's have you share and and then we yeah. can look at that. Why does it say? So is the screen visible? Uh, one second. Uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, what I have actually done. Uh, so let's start from the beginning. Oh, hey, Gitpod. So nice. Yeah, so this is the scorer accuracy, which is the method. So mm -hmm. I have actually given this label, which mm -hmm. will actually be the scorer label, and this is the model context label. Okay. So in the scorer accuracy method, what I have done is I have made a MC takes out a parameterized mm -hmm. constructor, which is take the M label. And uh, uh, I've also added the ACTX route to wrap what is being given by this. Okay, great. So in the MCTX uh, route, so this is what changes I have made. So uh, I'm I'm not able to figure out like if in the keyword arguments I will get the uh, the label uh, par uh, keyword. But how am I like going to use it in here? To I think what you want is so basically take the quotes off label there. Okay. Yeah. So just label, and then instead of keyword arguments, if you can just do label equals quotes label, and I think that will be so so not there um, at the very at the MCTX root level. So instead of star star key args, just do um, label equals. Sorry, not here. So on line 140. Line 140. Yeah. So line oh. 140. So KW args star star KW args. So get rid of. Sorry. So in 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 place of star star KW args here. Okay. Right. So, so if we just do label equals quotes label, now you have the same functionality. Now this is what you want, I believe. Right. So you're basically uh, saying. Yeah. yeah? Cool. I think that should work. 
Yeah, I think that's what you want, right? Yes. These decorators get really hard to they get they get they get like really hard to, to uh, wrap wrap one's head around when you're doing these nested levels. I had a hell of a time trying to figure out that op thing. It took me forever. Um, okay, so yeah, we've got an error. Let's try running just this one test. So test, so copy paste. So on that line, we, um, yeah, there we go. Uh, I think you're looking for, I don't think you need the, or, oh yeah, it is dash s, yeah, test, dash s, good one. Nice. All right. Oh yeah, we need to log in on. Yeah, the reason why it does that is because we don't want to print stack traces to the client. Um, from a security perspective. Um, so let's see, ACTX missing positional equation. Let's see, let's see where is get ACTX. So oh, I think this is just a label. Yeah, okay, so I think that should just be. So I'm getting this. MCTX, or let's see, yeah, I think what you mean to do here is ACT, oh, let's see. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, this is interesting. So what we ran into, I think, is the fact that they're stacking now. Because, um, uh, let's see. I think what happened here is is MCTX is calling get ACTX. Um, and uh, it's not expecting to be stacked with another one of these, you know, underscore root um, decorators. You know, it's not expecting. We haven't used two decorators on one root before. Um, yeah. So is is that not the way to go? Or well, is, is I'm kind of thinking maybe we want to make these a keyword argument, um, because or else you know we're in this positional argument space here. Um, so or let's see, or we could do star args. I think what we could do is like get actx. Um, Let's see. Yeah, let's look at um, let's look at the MCTX root function. So it basically calls handler. It says get MCTX request handler, and then it passes MCTX. So I think what we need is maybe a request. So get MCTX. So self comma request. Um, okay. So if you go up to ACTX. I think we need to pass basically like whatever args were before you sort of thing. So let's see an HCTX root. It's like MCTX and then MCTX ATX. Okay, so what is the error again? So the error was ACTX was missing. What? Yes, ACTX is missing when required position not in MCT. Okay. Oh, I think, I think Let's see. I think what's happening is because we're calling at ACTX root and then at MCTX root, the MCTX, so the MCTX root is running first. So basically we did, we wrapped, so if we scroll down to where we're doing this. So, so scroll down to where you have um, the at um, ACTX root. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So, so you have at ACTX root and then at MCTX root. Right. So at doing at and then the function name, right, for a decorator is equivalent to being like ACTX root. Um, you know, so, or I guess, so with MCTX root label is label, that's when you do at, that's equivalent of saying MCTX root 
and then calling label equals label and then calling the result of that with as accuracy with passing accuracy score right so you can read at yeah. mctx root yeah okay and so what we should read here is actx root open paren mctx root open paren label label equals my m label close paren open paren score accuracy close paren close paren so basically we're calling actx root and passing it this thing that's already been wrapped by mctx root um and i think what we want to do is we want to call actx root after we've called mctx root or like we want to wrap with mctx root first because atctx root is expecting that mctx root has already wrapped the function right yeah and i think the way around this is uh that we add we basically pass whatever arguments exist um so if you scroll up um, so don't call, yes, yeah, sir, right. So let's see, wait a second. Don't call ACTX root. Did you just add those two prints? Yeah, there we go. So leave it like that, yeah. Um, so let's see, so scroll all the way up to where we, you know, scroll to ACTX root. Okay, so, right, so you have git ACTX and then MCTX, right? Or you have git ACTX, self request mctx right on line one yeah. or 127 so yeah so i think what we need to do is we just need to say okay pass whatever arguments there are right so instead of mctx we need like star um yeah star handler args handler underscore args right so we could do star args but uh we ha we use star args in the next one so let's just do star uh, handler so star hand handler underscore args. Right. Okay, great. And so now if we just add in, in place of where we have on line 135, where we do handler, where we call handler and we pass MCTX and ACTX, if we pass in, in place of MCTX, if we do star handler args, then that will pass any arguments if they were there. Right, so if they weren't there, we're not going to pass them, right? And if they are there, we are going to pass them. And we should do the same thing in git mctx. And that way, this way, so on git mctx, if we add that star handler args, and then we also pass them here. Now this way, it won't matter if we call, if we decorate with mctx or actx root um, first, you know, it won't matter the order that we decorate the handler with. So here also, like, do I need to add the star handler arc, right? Yes. Do you want to just, so, yeah, do you want to explain back to me what we're doing here? Because this is really complicated, so <laughs> just to make sure. So uh, so we are actually trying to get the accuracy. So in the, so here actually for the accuracy scoring, we need a con model, a, an, a, an ACTX context. A scorer context and a model context. Mm -hmm. So for that, uh, actually, we need two labels. One label should be for the model context route, and another label should be ACTX route. Mm -hmm. So for the model context route, in below in the API endpoint, what we have given here is the uh, for the accuracy route, our label name will be label, but for our uh, model context route, uh, our label will be M label. Mm -hmm. So this is what we are trying to do here. So what we are actually trying to do here is we are actually trying to uh, 
get both the accuracy context scorer and the moral context scorer from these two loops. Mm -hmm. So we are actually trying to uh, uh, load these ACTs and MCTs. Mm -hmm. And and with the decorators, how does how does that how does that work? So for the decorator, like for the MCT route, what is happening here is so like if we are passing any label. So let's say we are not passing any label, then it will actually get the handler. Mm -hmm. So if there are any, uh, so we will get the handler here and we will wrap the handler and we will uh, give the wrapper, give mm -hmm. by the wrapper. But if we are actually getting some label, then for that label, we will actually have to load that M label. So mm -hmm. for we will get in the model context and we will load that M labels context. So MCTX will get, uh, we will get that here. And we will have to pass that MCTX, but we also now have to load the ACTX scorer. So we have created another route called ACTX, which will actually uh, give us the ACTX, route, and it will also pass that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we we'll, we will get both of them, and then we will calculate the score part. Yep. Okay. So and I think the one thing that we're missing here, right? So so when we wrap these, right, we're basically adding another argument onto the end of, of that handler's um, you know, call arguments, right? So we have usually it would just be request and now we're basically saying we're appending, you know, MCTX and ACT, ACTX to the end of that handler set of arguments. Um, so we need to go look at the handler again. I think we are missing ACTX from the set of arguments. So, and uh, sorry. So yeah, let's go look at the sorry the the score uh, accuracy underscore score. You know whatever the actual root is. So this yeah, is yeah. The method. Yeah. So check out the the arguments here. And and tell me where you think the uh, ACTX should be. Uh, we actually have to. We will actually get another ACTX here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So and and now now what we want to think about is, I'm not exactly sure which which order this is going to go in. <laughs> whether it's going to be a MCTX or ACTX first. So if we run this and it says ACTX. ACTX has no attribute score, right? It tries to call ACTX.score and it blows up. Then we're going to know that it should be ACTX comma MCTX, you know, because yeah. um, I can't, you know, I can't, yeah. We could read that if we wanted to, right? But we can also just run it and see. Um, that's my preferred method of things is write the code, run it, and see what happens. Uh, <laughs> that, that'll tell us how to read the code, right? <laughs> what the code actually does. Um, so let's see. No attribute score. Yeah, fake model context. So we need to swap MCTX and ACTX. So it looks like ACTX is being added to the set of arguments first, and then MCTX is. Or well, we don't. We don't. We can just swap it. Uh, we we don't need to. Yeah, we could do it there too. Yeah, you could swap it there. Yeah, sweet. Okay, now if we run it again, we should end up with the correct order. Yeah, it's good. Yay! <laughs> Woo! All right, I don't know if you can hear, but I'm clapping. All right, great. Yeah. Um, exciting. Yay. Okay, fun. Great. Um, wow, that's great. Okay, so I guess, uh, do we have, I think we had some more uh, test coverage stuff, right? We have the configure routes. Well, you probably, did you get all the configure routes and everything in the context routes? Yeah, those are all tested. Okay, so you've got all the tests so, now. Yes, we have all the tests for that. Okay. And this okay. Is the test for the code. Okay, great. Um, so um, yeah, from the examples test standpoint, uh, okay. So you said the examples were not working in their current state. Yes, JavaScript example does not. Work. Okay. And right, there was also that. this Python example. So yeah, we Python have example, like issues. Yeah. yeah, we have like issues for both of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and I don't think I ever ran that Python example. I just took it from some from uh, someone who wrote it and, and put it in here. I think it was uh, Sudarsana. Um, I think it worked at one point. Um, I think yeah, no, I think I did run it at one point. Um, but it's been a long time, <laughs> so obviously that thing was added a long time ago. Um, so let's see. 
Yeah, that was added back in. Um, well, I have no idea when that was added. Uh, if you, uh, if you, well, it doesn't matter. I guess it was added at some point. And it either does or doesn't work now. All right. So, um, oh, yeah. And if you guys have seen the CI is failing, I think it's related to the, there's an issue with NumPy and Auto SK Learn and the and this static comp, the compilation that's going on there. I believe it's going to be fixed with the pinning issue when the fin, pinning issue gets fixed um, due to the, the fact that we have NumPy at a 1.18 or something. And I think we'll get upgraded when we're done with that. Um, so let's see. All right. Yay. Good. All right. So next steps here. Um, so let's see. Okay. Uh, yeah, the examples. So, you know, all, I guess I'm, I'm going to look at the examples anyways. So I think we can just say that, that I'll handle updating the examples. Um, so we can just, you can just move on to the next thing. Um, oh, yay. Coverage. Yeah, this is a good thing to, to check out here. Um, so you can just move on. Let's check what the next phase here is. So it's the sixth phase, I guess. No, yeah. it's something else. Oh, God, I'm so excited to have this accuracy stuff. Um, so let's see. Okay, update the HTTP service. Okay, so are we... Oh, I think we have some command line. Um, there's command line... Let's see, it looks like the, there's, there's bullet points in the... Um, Bullet, there's the bullet points in the in phase six of this issue, um, which is 732, and there's command line uh, instantiation objects as, or uh, options as well. Um, so let's see. So yeah, I we think, have like documents. Yeah. So let's yeah. see. Update documentation. Okay. So I think the one thing, the let's see, service HTTP docs um, CLI. Okay. So if you look at um, the documentation for the, uh, where is it? Yeah. So if you look at the documentation, so if you look in in service HTTP. Um, so you see, I don't know what that modify. <laughs> I don't know what that one that just says modify was. Uh, we'll just remove that. Um, it was probably okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I think it was modify the. Okay. So go into, sorry, go into service HTTP docs CLI.RST. Docs CLI RST. Okay, check this out. So we like need to update the yeah. So see sources at the top here. It's got sources and models. So yeah. So these yeah. these basically allow us to instantiate the source of the model right on the command line. Um, um, yeah, it, on the command line. Um, so basically, you know, you don't have to use the configure root. It's already pre-configured. So we should make sure that the um, um, we should make sure that we can instantiate the sources from the command line or the, the score from the command line as well. Um, and I think that's our final thing in phase six here. And then we're basically on to phase seven and then we're done. Holy shit, man. Oh, this yeah. has been a crazy project. You did, you've done a great job on this. Um, this has been huge. Wow. June, we've been doing this since June. Holy smokes. This is a big one. I mean, wow. All right. Um, this has been a major refactor. Okay, yeah. So let's let's get this in here into the you know update. So while you're at it, let's just you know 
when we said phase seven update documentation, that's um, sort of more than uh, that's like the rest of the docs, right? Um, so this is this is you know uh, they this is we still want to update the HTTP service while we're at it here because I think we're going to forget. Um, so while we're in the HTTP service, let's update the HTTP service docs so that docs slash CLIRST um, and uh, make sure there are tests with this. Um, that should be in test slash test CLI. Um, and then we also have, um, so we need to make sure that the, this works for test CLI, I think. And you should see the, the sources and the models in there in test CLI. Um, and then, um, let's see. Yeah. Uh, I think I've been, I, We've been pretty good about keeping the HTTP service coverage up. <laughs> the, it's one of the, you know, we have it, we're hit or miss some other places, but okay, so test models, SLR model, train the model, accuracy. Okay, let's see. Run. Great. Okay, I think that is, I think this, I think this is, I think we're looking in the right place. Um, let me know if, if you run into hit in any issues here. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Um, I think so, that's our final yeah. thing on phase six. Yeah. Awesome. Good stuff. And I think this is... Yeah. Yes, we are actually testing the coverage. Okay, great. Sweet. Hey, there we go. All right. That's what we like to see. Hey, sweet. All right. Very good. Very good. Okay. So I think, and I think, you know, I updated the meeting minutes to say, you know, this is the next step. We're looking at that. Um, and I'll, I'll check these off in the, um, in the issue here. Um, and then I think that's the last thing for our phase six is just that CLI stuff. Awesome. Okay, and then eventually we have to rebase this beast. Um, yeah. <laughs> the beast is there. Replace with... Um, okay, replace with... Move on. Okay, awesome. Good stuff. All right, anybody have anything else for today? Uh, no, that's it from my side. Thank you. All right, hey, thanks everyone. Have a good uh, rest no, of your... Uh, oh, yeah? Uh, you, you are asking for my email ID. I didn't uh, hear why. Oh, oh this is because just to add you guys to this meeting. Um, so if I, oh. I've added everyone's email to the meeting. Uh, did I add yours to the meeting? Uh, wait, I thought I did, and now it's not showing up. Yes, we are actually getting an email in our, our meeting. Okay, great. Um, okay. So that, just because you know, I usually have to allow you into the meeting, but apparently that's the way that you can get it to just let you in. Um, if I add people's names to the meeting, um, I thought okay. I nice, added nice. you too. So you, that way you guys won't have to wait around in the lobby or sometimes, you know, I don't see um, the, uh, sometimes I don't see the, wow, I have too many tabs open. Okay, so let me make sure. Okay, yes, you're on there now too. Great. Um, so uh, yeah, that's that's all. So just just to make sure that you can get in if I'm not here. Um, and like I said, you know, I've I've been a little bit late because I run this I run this uh, meeting before this now too. Apparently Tuesday mornings are a good time for a meeting or Tuesday evenings for you guys. So all right. Anyways, have a great night and a great rest of your week. Um, let me know if there's anything else, and uh, I'll be around. All right. Okay. Bye. Thanks everyone. Bye. Great work. Bye.